This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get awesome. It is the awesome cast. It is the first episode of 2019. It is episode 427 of the awesome cast. Where we tech, talk tech, get geeky from a Pittsburgh state of mind. With me, because a lot of people apparently partied too hard over the New Year's and uh, and had to call off of the podcast uh, this week and work. It's not just the podcast; they didn't even make it to work. Uh, but Ron Kraus, Crazy Kraus, is with us here in the studio. Welcome back. Thanks for having me. Welcome back. I'm just like the, the, the lefty you call out of the bullpen. That's all. The lefty you call out of the bullpen. Yeah, you were already scheduled. You, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's all right. You know, you know we, we were going to do like kind of a pre-CES. And uh, yeah, well, you're a go-to to talk about gadgets and stuff as well. So, um, and this is this is like a tech, futuristic, you know, Christmassy kind of thing. You know, I don't know how much we're going to actually get in hands, but it's just like, the possibilities, everybody, and we're gonna have a positive spin on CES. So many podcasts we listen to are just like so, like ah oh, man, you know. And we don't see this stuff. CES. Here we go again. Uh, but I mean, it's I still get excited after all these years about seeing all the weird things that may or may not happen or may or may not be real. But you know, you just like the way the people are looking. The I possibilities. The like possibilities. Yes. Absolutely. I haven't seen a lot of podcasting stuff yet, but at least we're beyond the point where there's an entire section dedicated to iPhone cases. <laughs> <laughs> you remember those days? Yeah. I, I, yeah. We'll, we'll get we'll get into that. But anyways, this is the Awesome Cast. You can check out everything at awesomecast.com. It's at awesomecast at uh, sorgatronmedia.com. At awesomecast on the Twitter and the Awesomecast Facebook. Subscribe and rate us on your favorite podcast app and watch the video versions on Facebook and YouTube. And of course, we're here now that's 2019 and the holidays are past us every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern um on the uh, awesome cast facebook page also uh check out our streaming partners that do care of the show afterwards at rivers edge pgh.com saturday mornings at 9 a.m and over our friends on the west coast the 405 media.com weekdays at 9 a.m pacific time noon eastern time and also thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash awesome cast like our friends Matt Weller and John Dickey DeGore at the Coffee Club $5 level and at the Fan of the Show dollar level, Michael Fedor uh, as well. You guys can support the show if you like what's going on here at patreon.com slash awesomecast. And if you're looking for some great advertising options that won't break the bank, uh, hit up producer Missy over there and advertise with us. For more details, hit her up at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. So let's get into our awesome things of the week. I'm going to start because it is not about CES. and But I think it's worth talking about. I watched slash played slash experimented with Bandersnatch. That sounds like a weird. I feel like there would be a comment if Katie was here. Um, but uh, no, it was the it was the newest Black Mirror episode. I'm going to quote, air quote here Black Mirror episode here, and um, <laughs> and, uh, it, and 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 it was a, it was an interactive thing. We talked about it a few weeks ago on the show um, Minecraft, right? Yeah. And they were taking the Telltale games that were like computer generated and they made out a video. And I started poking at it, then I'm like, I can't hang with this man. <laughs> so, um, and and I didn't realize they did this years ago with a couple of titles, like several. Oh, so this is the create your own adventure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They did do that before. Yeah. That's yeah. So so I got going and and I got caught in the trap. I think a lot of people did. I went. To, I'm like, okay, I'm here. I'm I'm at home. I'm sick. I'm gonna I'm gonna bandersnatch. Um, and I sat down in my living room cause I haven't sat down in my living room and watched on a TV in the longest time. And I'm like, I'm going to bandersnatch on my Apple TV. And, and I sit down and I hit play and I get this, this informational video about how I can't bandersnatch on my Apple TV. 
because it's not a supported device. But use these devices, oh, and a lot of the devices look like my Apple TV. Like, uh, and then I'm like, do I download the app to my the Xbox 360? Do I bother? Probably won't work. Whatever. So I grabbed Missy's iPad. <laughs> 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 Thankfully, that was there because I didn't have to do it on my phone. Um, it was fun. It was uh-huh. a, okay. So it's very and and there might be slight spoilers in in some of the conversation here. So hit that hit spoiler that spoiler alert. Hit that hit, uh, bump forward a couple minutes here. Um, but it's more about the experience than than the the, the you know spoilery part of it. Um, you you get two choices, of course, right? Um, like they start you off easy, like which cereal do you want, and oh, you wow. pick the cereal, and then like later on you see a commercial for the same cereal. Oh, like on cool. the TV okay. next to the guy, right? So I think that I think that was connected, right? But I'll, and there's like conversations about this could be how Netflix is going to like super serve you ads or something in, in things in the future. I don't know. I think it was some pontification, but it, either way, it's a fun little thing. Um, and I think it was a serial that was renamed and is not around anymore, okay. but it's, it's around as a different name. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I don't know. Well, you keep going through this. It's about a guy making a video game called Bandersnatch based on a book called Bandersnatch. And the book is also a choose your adventure book. It's in 1984, I believe. Oh, neat. So it's a computer game there. Um, it's a lot of fun if you're a Black Mirror viewer because a lot of the games are based on other Black Mirror episodes. Oh, very cool. So okay. there's really cool threads there. Um, and just, I mean, they have, a lot of these have <laughs> Easter eggs about, about the other seasons and everything too. Um, but as you go through... Um, it, it's, whereas I think most choose your adventure, like it's, it, it leads you to an outcome. I think each one of these kind of leads you to a different reality. <laughs> so, oh, the way this goes, there's one that leads to like kind of the point of, you know, oh, okay. Yeah. This does so-and-so that he's basing on, uh, they thought, keep talking about like, yeah, it ended in a grizzly murder, da, 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 right. you know? And I, uh, yeah, it's probably this is going to end up in a grizzly murder. Da 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 da. That's one of the endings, right? Okay. Um, then there's one point where like it start. He starts yelling at the computer, and it says, "Who are you?" And you can either like throw up the thing that's going to make him go insane, or you can say Netflix, and you start having a conversation. Like, "Hi, I'm from the future, and I'm controlling everything that you're doing." It is so much fun. Even knowing that, you're going to have fun with this. Okay. And and and. The way that they put it together, like, you do something, you die. Like, there was a thing where you pick, like, yeah, I'll go with the developer and we'll make the game. And they, and, and different versions of this lead to somebody on TV reviewing the game that is just a kind of review for how the storyline you just did. Wow. Because <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, like, it happens, but it was boring. How- it happens because, but you died and it got completed by somebody else. And- how many variables were there? Like, can you do this? It's a repeatable. Yeah, experience. it's a repeatable experience because it'll, it'll be like, okay, go back to this point where you chose this. Do you want to choose the other thing? And you're like, okay, so it'll rewind, recap everything that came up with that. Well, it's just like kind of a really quick thing, right? And pick up where you left off. Oh, that's even to the point where you go meet certain people and like, I feel like I've met you before. Wow, it's fun. Oh, it is cool. a lot okay. of fun. It is not like there was kind of. Is this a good um, Black Mirror episode? I, I'm gonna say no. Like, but I don't think that's the point of it, right? The experience is the point of it. So is that point. the quote unquote future? What uh, these you these know, do things? Do you see these things becoming? It's more, more mainstream. Realistic. Although it's gotta take a lot more time to write and film and put mm-hmm. put together. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um. No, it does. Um, it it because they have to make all those endings, and they talked about like the production of that, and and you have to make everything and make yeah. sure it's seamless and goes together. You know, you know, he, he has to seamlessly like have a shot on his face, and he looks to the one tape and not the other tape, right? Like little things like that mm-hmm. too. And 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 we've seen versions of these on like DVD, and I was always like kind of like you know you would see the DVD skip as it's searching for the next chapter for it to go to. And uh, it was seamless. I didn't notice oh, it. Wow. And, and I'm on like an LTE connection on, okay, on, a, yeah. on an iPad, right? And it was ab- I, it felt absolutely seamless. Um, and it was a really good. I, it was a really good time. I, I recommend it. It's um, it's not terrible. Like, it can get a little creepy at certain points. 
Um, there is a there is a true ending that I didn't talk about. I feel is the true ending. You know, the the very Black Mirror esque. You know. Right ending that like it's an actually kind of a happy sad ending you know thing um so no, i'm really, it, it, check it out if that's a little too much for you go try minecraft story and see how that goes for you too. <laughs> but it's cool that they're doing these kinds of things and um black mirror is the right thing to do it mm -hmm. right if you've been watching black mirror yeah if you're a black mirror fan i would definitely say that it's a type of weird thing you'd expect them to do you know, so no, go check it out. It's Bandersnatch. It's on Netflix. Um, um, if you have an interactive type device, um, that's going to be the thing you're going to want to watch it on. So, um, <laughs> Bander Grab. I think. I wonder if that's a. Uh, <laughs> I'm catching up on the. Uh, so so no, enter the tunnel. Turn to page thirty two. Move west. Turn to page fifty six. You know what I. Kraus, have you done a turn? Uh, uh, choose your adventure book. Oh gosh, yes. As a kid, all I'm the time. Wait, all the time, really? I've oh, done yeah. one. Really? I've done one. You want to take oh, a yeah. hot guess at what that story was that I that I did to choose your adventure? That I have one no time, idea. That one book. It was a young Indiana Jones book. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like it was like, oh, you didn't grab the thing. It blew up. Well, weren't Go the back. Goosebumps books? I never did goosebumps. They weren't they kind of a I have no choose idea. your own adventure kind of thing. I feel like they would have at some point or another, right? Yeah, I like, it, it so. feels like the right thing. Um, but to my knowledge, I don't think they were. Okay. So, um. Anyways, <laughs> it, but it, it, it yeah, it, it's it's pretty cool. And somebody posted like the tree, like the the, the choice. Oh, the diagram. decision tree. Yeah. Yeah, but it was so small in the post I couldn't read it. But I'm like, that's the thing, you know. I'd love to just like go through that. So are we doing a choose your own awesome cast? Yeah, yes. if only. Do you want to hear about CES or do you want to hear about uh, what's next? <laughs> <laughs> Kraus. It is a choose your own adventure. Unfortunately, only Sorg and Kraus can choose their own adventures. Kraus, what's your awesome thing of the week? CES season. CES season. <laughs> hey, oh, gonna yeah, it's a great time of the year. And you're right. You know, a lot of people get burned out. Mm -hmm. I don't know. To me, I look at it as it's just this whole possibilities. I just think it's interesting to see what these companies come up with. You know, it's like we talked at the end of the year show. You know, my awesome thing or my speculation for the year was to see more, you know, Google and, and Alexa. Oh, sorry. I should say A and Siri oh, and the S devices and what you know what would they come up with there goes my ipad and here yeah and here we go and and, and here they come you know <laughs> we're getting all these you know variety of devices that are going to be connected to those services and i you know yes we might never see half of them mm -hmm. but i just think it's great to see you know um the helicopter company um is has a a a a, a Potential for a self-driving air taxi, Bell, the manufacturer Bell. It's cool. Like, who wouldn't want to go for a ride in a self-driving air taxi? Mm -hmm. I would. I know. Maybe I'm crazy. Wait, but this I is would. active at CES. Yes. That's, well, it's that's a, scary. I did it's a, a waiver. Um, you have to sign. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know if you can actually take a ride in it, but but they're there going, "Hey, look, this is some. This is a concept that we're yeah. we're working on. Yeah. You know." You at least see like what's in the lab, right? Yeah. Whether it was realistic or not, it's like a little peek behind the curtain. Yeah. Granted, they're not just opening the curtain so you no, can no, see; no. they're letting you see selective it's things, orchestrated, and that's that's yes. a thing, sure. But and I just think it's great to see this idea. You know, Whirlpool coming out with a a concept for a connected oven. Who'd ever thought instead of a, of just a, a piece of glass there on the front of your oven? It's going to be a digitizer, you know, something where you can interact with it. Maybe it'll put a recipe up on the wall and things like that. It's it's just great ideas. It's just interesting to see what people come up with. That's awesome. Well, we're going to get into it. And there's a lot of things that, that I know we've been sharing here the last couple of days. A lot of robots doing things, huggable robots, um, you know, things you can speak to. I know I know uh, Alex is in the chat room saying all he wants for 2019 is voice controlled bidet. I, what do you get to yell? Yeah. Play my butt. <laughs> Maybe it's customizable. There it is. 
<laughs> I'm not going to get into the language versions of those. Uh, but <laughs> I'm trying to keep this show clean. That's for the I know I know I didn't for the pre-show, but um, anyways, uh, though, but we'll get into those in a moment, including uh, uh everything that is kind of a uh, 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 in the group that you guys wanted to see as well. So, but in the meantime, it is a new year, which means a new page. And for our friends at Comic Book Pit, that happens to have characters and speech bubbles. Yep. See, I'm representing here. It's off camera, but uh, we got uh, the, the lovely producer Missy uh, got me a uh, wonderful picture of um, of a comic book family. Uh, <laughs> so representing, and I, I was I was really hoping they were going to record yesterday so they'd see that they were, you know, had that kind of for some backdrop. But anyways. Uh, you can uh, tune in to the Comic Book Pit podcast for your comic and comic book related news. Those guys just hit a milestone of 300 episodes. Uh, they were celebrating here a few weeks ago. Go check that out. And it has a lot of great interviews. They talked with uh, Ed Pisker, uh, Pittsburgher here that's done stuff with American Splendor and um, uh, the X-Men Grand Design book. That is fantastic, by the way. It's like it is uh, it is one of the the I think it was one of the top 10, 20 books on a couple of articles I, I saw at the end of the year for comic oh, wow. books. And he was sitting right there where you are, Krause. That's uh, awesome. For the comic book. But really cool dude. Way more talented than I am. I actually know his brother from wrestling, so it was really cool that like that geekdom kind of comes together like yeah, that. That's I, I got awesome. to meet him at a wrestling show and then he It's crossover geekdom. Oh it is. There's so much of that happening these days. And it's really cool. And our good friends at the comic book pit dot com are a part of that. Go check them out. Um and they're just an extension of the uh, geekdom here at Sorgatron Media. All right, um, I'm not going to get into the evolution of game music. Uh, that's a video over on the uh, group that uh, Brandon put in there. Uh, but uh, And we talked about Soldier Boy on the pre-show. Yeah. You got to be live for that. Tell me. <laughs> I wish Riz was here to tell me about um, Robot Pikachu. Speaking of robots, how about Robot Pikachu will sing to you? Oh, it's not opening up here. Um, let me see if I can cue this video up for you guys. Um, it, it, and it's very, it's a very Japanese commercial, but yeah, it's a little like, I don't know, couple inch tall Pikachu within the head moves. I think that's all the robotics that are a part of this thing. And it sings to you. Let's see if I can pull that up here. I've got oh, no, it. I've got HDMI. it playing. You got it playing over there? Uh, on my time. Turn it up a yeah. little, turn it up a little bit so we can hear that. Uh, Apparently I haven't patched that through on here yet. <laughs> you understand the pikachu so you get the idea (laughs) that's awesome it's something very japanese and very japanese i don't see man i hate when they post videos like this and there's like nothing actual information but anyways um so (laughs) that was a fun one also uh dave podner um dropped us it says uh mission picks not so distant uh future so let me pull up this article from dave potter and uh, while i'm waiting for that to load up we will plug the tiny shutter podcast um they probably have a lot of things they'll be talking about here in the coming weeks right uh so <laughs> in the meantime steve's in the chat room saying his awesome thing is a sous vide cooker that amanda bought him over christmas uh that he can control his uh <laughs> he can control from his phone on an app sous vide isn't a quick way to cook it's delicious take some time um I, there's some podcasts i have listened to that are technically technology podcasts but they will just go i think using the same ones they mm-hmm. will just go off talking about sous vide cooking for 10 minutes yes they just will because but yeah it's kind of a tech so and, it's basic- and sous vide is basically boiling water yeah that's it that's so it. instead of cooking your steak on a grill you put it in a bag in boiling water for an extended point of time and it just gives you a different texture and but everything, see, right? But see, from what I understand, though, and I am not a chef by any stretch. I have a brother-in-law who is a chef, for real. But from what I understand, you know, it's all about temperature. So if you want, like, a medium-rare steak, mm-hmm. you set it to the medium-rare temperature, and it can stay in that bath for an extended period of time because all it's doing is holding at that temperature so then when you're ready you put lift the bag out you know basically sear it in a pan to get the char marks on it and it's ready to eat it, it sounds like something that it's well, like yeah, witchcraft i was gonna say it's not that it's not something that i wouldn't have enough patience for because it sounds like it's really super easy yeah 
I mean, it's it's kind of like another way to slow cooker, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because then they talk. Then I've heard people talk about how they put herbs and stuff and different uh, marinades stuff in the bag with the thing, so it cooks. Like I said again, mm-hmm. I'm no chef, but <laughs> all right. Uh, I, I did a little bit of prep on this one that Dave Potter just shared in here. Uh, oh, wait, wait, hold on a second, hold on a second, Steve. For more on this, Steve said it's all on how you finish the meat for the flavor. Ah. Hmm. Um, also, Dave Dave says on Tiny Tiny Shutter, it's like, yeah, lots coming up on the Tiny Shutter podcast, including chocolate chip cookie recipe videos shot on an iPhone. Ooh, there better be 3D pictures of those as well for on, on the Facebook. Nice. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, le- yep, just like uh, he's a, well, Steve, I want to point out Steve is, 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 is a cook at, at some restaurants. Oh, well, okay. So, like, he, he's, he's a cook at he's some deep. restaurant. Yeah, I, I don't know. It always seems like it's a different one every time I talk to him, but... <laughs> uh but no he's so he's he's in that um yeah so so dave put in here um that i wasn't sure i didn't know like what this community was that he was talking about so i wanted to take a peek real quick um so there is this app community on um it looks like it was you know on iphone and everything called mission pick Okay. Um, and, and if you, I just went to the main website to look for it and it says you can get a new photo challenge every day. Right. And it's like, it looks like, you know, the, flex your photography, play with your friends. So it's like, Hey, go take a picture of, you know, this kind of thing, use this kind of, kind of deal. Right. So, um, Dave is sharing with us, apparently they are going, um, apparently they're going away, unfortunately. But the cool thing about it is here's the, here's where it gets awesome. Um, he says online communities can be awesome after the uh, app mission pick from uh, Brett Ronsaville shut down. Um, the users came together to start following each other on Instagram and created a uh, Facebook group so they could stay in touch and share photos. The group started creating daily missions to copy what the app did. Oh, that's very cool. That's cool. Yeah. That's really nice. That, that, that's awesome. Like, and that's and that's the thing, you know. Um, and, and it seems like... Some, Obviously, it's a it's a concept that they are able to replicate amongst the community. Mm-hmm. There's got to be opportunity in that somewhere too, for somebody else to replicate this or or something like that. And app developers, maybe in a, yeah, app developers. Maybe there's some app developers amongst that that community or something like that would be a really cool thing to do. You know, yeah. Um, or you know, because they you have know, an audience, obviously. And not getting into it, maybe it's something about the business practices or how he was pulling it together that they had to do it. Maybe you know the way they were implementing servers. And server costs and everything. Maybe it's something that someone else can look at and say, "Well, we can do it this way," you know, and be able to do that. And then that kind of, you know, concept at least will live right. on with with it. So that's really cool. So mission pick, and I guess look for those communities and see what the goes those guys are doing. And maybe Dave will uh, post some because I know he, he posted this over in the Awesome Cast Facebook group, and you guys can join that as well. And that's where a lot of these conversation, a lot of these stories have come from. So bartender at high end restaurants. Sorry. <laughs> Steve is a bartender at high-end restaurants. Oh. He knows about booze, learning the technology and nuances of cooking is a passion. Okay, I got I got I got the details mixed up there. A little bit. Well, you know what I'm not gonna mess up is this next ad read for our friends at Slice on Broadway. Although I did not fix the graphic that goes along with it. That is in the east or yes, the east end Carnegie. PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates, and right here in Beachview. Can we just uh, say everywhere? It's just everywhere. Everywhere in Pittsburgh. You're probably, you're probably good. You're probably a 10-minute drive from it if you're in the Pittsburgh area. Our friends at Slice on Broadway at SliceOnBroadway.com, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. For, it, was, it was good. It was a couple weeks without Slice on Broadway. It's been busy. It's been the holidays. They've been off the last two Tuesdays. Well, hey, everybody's been busy the last two Tuesdays, right? Uh, so, uh, but no, these guys supporting us here on the show, making sure that anybody that comes in for the awesome cast and the Wrestling Mayhem show get fed uh, with some awesome pizza from our good friends there. Go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter, and uh, let them know you heard about them over here on the awesome cast. Thanks to those guys once again. All right. Now we can deep dive CES. Where do we start, Krause? We can start. Let's start with the LG TV because it's really dang cool. Let's start with the giant TV element in the. In the front. Yeah. Well, that is always a great place to start with CES. Just really what, big what, TV. What'd you say? The rollable one? 
Yeah, is that why what not? we're doing? Because this blew my freaking mind when you showed me this before the show. <laughs> Holy hell! Explain to the audio listeners what I'm about to show them. Okay, so basically, you have a 42 inch, you know, television. Your typical run of the mill 42 inch OLED Im- television. Imagine it came in a box, 42 inches long by 12 inches tall. Okay, so it's a little box you sit on your entertainment center you plug it in you push a button and the screen rolls out how would you explain that for the audio people pure magic pure magic is what it is i love the it like rolls out like i say it paper towel like a paper towel you know like if the paper towel is on its side it is and you pulled it from the top yeah no 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 missy was that Back in the day, when I yeah 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 when yes, a high school teacher pulled down the projector the opposite screen, direction. yes, but it's mechanical and does it by itself. <laughs> yeah, because if exactly. I did it, oh, is this a video? No, yeah, these are photos. I think, it no, is I think these are photos. Um, I love their. So you know, if you want, don't want to block that nice view all the time with your television because you have an awesome living room. Um, this is awesome. This is great. Like, I'd love to see the texture of the screen itself. I know. Like, well, you can see they showed us a little shot from behind the TV. Did you see that one? Yeah, yeah. I think that's it, what, later one. in the article. Oh, it was there, but I don't know if I can get back to it easy. Yeah, but the other thing I thought was wait, 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 wait. I want to pull back a minute because this is the most BS controller that they have for this thing. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's just, it looks like it looks like if you took the Apple controller and 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 it has the numbers on it, and the number buttons are the shapes of the numbers and. I don't know. It just seems but like... let's be honest. Who I, uses the controller that comes yeah, out of the box true. anyway? You're just going to connect an Apple TV to it anyways, right? Yeah, exactly. Well, or, will or, you? Uh, uh-huh. That brings us to our next story. I'm, I'm still looking at this awesome TV. <laughs> but, uh, but So this is a big one, and a lot of people were really excited about this. Um, in the group, in the Twitter, um, I think you guys were already commenting uh, at the beginning of the show about this as well. But Apple was... Apple is... For for some for a company that doesn't show up at CES and hasn't for have they ever? Uh, yeah, long maybe back time. in the day. Okay, back in the day. Long you know time. when we presented the Macintosh, but or whatever, right? Yes. But <laughs> but still, you know. But their their presence. Yeah, and suddenly they're opening the floodgates. Um, I know LG. I believe Samsung. I know there's at least one other manufacturer at the moment. It does. It um escapes me the name. But they're all going to have um, AirPlay 2 uh, compatibility, and they're also going to have iTunes directly on the device. You know, an, an installable feature. I'm wondering if my old, if my couple year old Samsung TV will get this backwards compatibility. I feel like that's. I don't know. Are they good with like? putting new features on those older ones well but if it's just a quote-unquote app Mm -hmm. it could happen now maybe not the airplay piece but why couldn't i get the itunes app on my you know three-year-old yeah samsung television i mean because there's already uh, okay so if you're getting itunes we're talking about you're able to buy you're not getting the apps you're not getting Apple TV apps. No. I want to clarify this. No. You're getting access to so, I buy movies and music on iTunes, tunes, on yes. Apple platforms. Now I have access to purchase and view those on a Samsung TV, on, on an, an L- LG, LG TV, TV right. that may be so. cool and fooled out. And co- just, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. I'm still, I'm still geeking out over that one. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, that's interesting. That's interesting. Now the article I read attributed it whether you know take this with a grain of salt that the, they attributed it the idea of suddenly Apple opening the walled garden so a little bit was due to the fact you know that Wall Street's been beating them up pretty good about iPhone sales mm-hmm. and so now maybe they're leaning into their you know their services division a little more to help you know help keep the, the 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 dollars flowing in so to speak mm-hmm. but um I, I think it's a great idea i'm very excited 
I know plenty of people, you know, Chilla and you guys all live in that apple ecosystem, that fruit <laughs> ecosystem. I don't know how, how much I live in it anymore because I just buy things on whatever platform is cheapest to put it in movies anywhere now. Oh, right. Yeah, okay. so. But but you, I'm sure you, like, I know my wife, she has a significant amount of music and mm-hmm. things oh, yeah, absolutely. in iTunes. So and if you having it, another way to get to that information is always great. So now we're not getting Apple TVs. Can we stop like like Apple TVs? Apple, TVs. Apple TVs. space TVs. TVs. Yes, <laughs> we're not getting this, guys. I would say that's definitely I think done. It's de- no, definitely not a thing that's happening. It doesn't make sense. Maybe there was a thing that they were going to do that would have made sense if they put it out five years ago, right? And I just can't think. And this is a good another point that uh, that several people I think had brought up this idea that um, this idea that like well if they're going to do their own TV stuff, they need to make sure that face is as wide as possible, right? And even wider than just the mass of devices that are out there right now, right? It makes sense, absolutely mm-hmm. makes sense. So, um, <laughs> let me go to one uh, like. Man, you know, I'm one of the OG Google Glassers. If there's anything I can say, I am one of the, I am, I am a, you could call me a Google Glass hipster. Wow. I'm, I'll go with it. I will that own that. That could be a show title. I will own that. Google, I feel like we've had that as a show title before, back when I had it. But, and you know, I always get excited when somebody says something that looks like it could be the next Google Glass. This is one that came up. I don't think, this. I'm sure this is a CS thing, but uh, the articles are all over the place this week. Uh, it's labeled CS, I think. Um, Vuzix Blade, V-U-Z-I-X. Have fun spelling that one. Um, so they have $1,000 smart glasses, and um, they're... They look like glasses, okay. So one, if you're not prescription glasses, then it's probably not going to be as attractive to you. But hey, in geekdom, I think this is going to work. Um, so it is pretty. It does most of what Google Glass does. It has the touch pad on the one side that mm-hmm. you can tap and slide. It's got a camera on one side of the lens. It projects the screen. Um, is Wherever it's... you want on the lens, actually. So it could be in the middle of your vision. It could be at the top of your vision. Like, it's it's pretty flexible. Oh, so it's goes. not just that little upper corner. No, okay. no, no, no. Um, it is going to, for and, and these weren't ready at the time, but it, it's going to make use of A-Train, um, Amazon nice. uh, speech, in order to, to interface with it that way. Uh, it's, uh, I, I feel like it was an Android based operating system when i read before i'm trying to find that in the article or maybe it was in the video that i I listened to it looks like a valid option and being like being a thousand dollars and built into the lenses that doesn't seem out there for to me no really when you think about it although wasn't the whole camera idea kind of what made people nervous about it is the glasses. Well, there is a red light when the camera is on in this. Okay, that's smart. That's mm-hmm. smart. Mm-hmm. I, I and I kind of wish there was just one without a camera. Can I just get the functionality? Right. Right. I and again for me, I look at some. You just of, want the access to the data. Yeah. I, I and and for me, I, I I want the hey, I'm wearing glasses anyways, and I will be wearing glasses for the foreseeable future. Why can't I put some technology in them? Why can't I use what's you know? A drawback of having glasses, you know, all around. I don't mind them. You know, I'm used to them. It's my life. <laughs> Sorg, you're a married man. I'm what? You're a married man. Yeah, so? Would, have you ever been told that you've been disconnected? Having that built into your glasses every single day would might make you a little more disconnected. <laughs> I don't know what's going on in your household, Krause, but <laughs> I get yelled at all the time. You and that damn phone. You and that damn tablet. Oh, we are both guilty, equally yes. guilty, I'm sure, in my household. What? <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. I started I, what? something. It is not equal. <laughs> How's that game you play every night? Uh, anyways. Oh, but I'm... I'm sh- <laughs> anyways. Uh, no, I, I, I kind of like the concept. And I'm interested to see uh, kind of how it turns out here, you know, to see that kind of competitor come. Um, it, it's, is it this one? 
who was I just who I was just reading one of these oh it was one of the VR helmets never mind but there was something I was reading about they were like more um, company focused than than consumer uh let's see you you hit a couple in a row there so let me let me poke yeah, at a couple of fine. these two uh those are non CES I want to find one of my robots you know screw that let's talk about VR Audi puts VR in the back seat they teamed with Disney Marvel Disney um and the idea is. You're in the back seat. I'm waiting for the rest of the concept here. The idea is you're in the back seat. Let's not let's not talk about why you're in the back seat. Maybe it's a cab. Maybe it's something. You're just, whatever. You're in a back seat. You need to waste some time. Whatever. You feel like playing a VR game. Why not? Right. Well, how about Audi's technology here? Will actually um, they they teamed up and made a a rocket raccoon based game where you're flying around. It's a space shooter. You mm-hmm. hear him talking and everything. But the deal is, as you're driving, or somebody else is driving for you, and this is a fixed course that they had around CES, I guess. Um, while you are driving, the game will actually react to your movements. It's a pretty good video on Engadget, um, kind of showing this off a little bit. So, and I think you pointed out, like, wow, like, there's a point where they stopped, and, like, the game actually has, like, little space aliens just kind of walking across the screen Crossing a little bit. the road, yes. Yeah, 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 like in space, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like, you know, as the car kind of pitches from one side to the other, like, you know, the game kind of reacts to it. I'm presuming that this game is uh, is on rails, which means you're not in control of where you move, just kind of the shooting around, looking around kind of aspect, which a lot of games do, especially kind of simpler games, right? Yeah. Um, but uh, I think it's a pretty cool concept. I, I don't know where you go with this. Except I, you know, you go to the drugstore with your parents, or you know, you go. <laughs> this to is for Gi the kids. Eagle. You know, yeah, I would think it's for the kids, right? Mm-hmm. I, uh, I'd imagine. Um, but yeah, and they're supposedly going to be. Um, they're they're doing partnerships with I heard uh, like Paramount and other movie studios, so they're working on the content for this idea, right? Okay, um, it's Rocket Rescue Run is the game that they have. Um, it says. You're actually saving Iron Man from an attack by Thanos. Oh, they really go into that Marvel properties, does it? Don't they? Uh, so it's it's kind of funny. It's kind of it's a fixed time kind of situation too. <laughs> Turning vehicles into moving theme parks. The concept is called Hollow Ride, by the way, too. A Hollow Lens, Hollow Ride. There's going to be a lot of these Hollow things. Yes. Until somebody does a Hollow Deck, and then we're in. Then we're in. Then we are. Full Star Trek mode. That's right. Oh, boy. Where's my communicator? Where is your communicator? Um, they put VR in the back seats and also um, NXT, or no, HT, mm-hmm. uh, letters. HTC's next VR headset is the Vive Cosmos. And, and that's about all we know, they say. So this was interesting. The Vive, I think, is, is my favorite because it's, it's really good with the spatial like mm-hmm. if you have it, there's a, usually a camera, and you can move in it. You can literally stand up and move around in a space, and it reacts to that, right? Um, and they're making cheaper versions and 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 working that out. I think there was a cheaper one. I think that's the one that was for um, companies to yeah. use a while ago. Um, so this is the Cosmos version. The the weird detail from this is apparently not only will this tether. Um, I think they said wirelessly to a pc obviously Mm -hmm. but also to a smartphone somehow oh so i mean you may be able to pick one of these up but just simply pair it to your i'm going to presume in the android for now um and carry the apps on that and basically your your phone would be the cpu that powers that kind of thing that's a great idea and let's be honest that's the barrier to entry right now Mm -hmm. is the cost Mm -hmm. and the hardware involved you know because you're not just buying the headset and the controllers. You're also buying the, you know, what, $1,500, you know, PC to go yeah. along to drive. And if it's suddenly you could dry, use a, you know, all the $1,000 cell phone. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's not that big of a savings, but, but maybe but if the, you yeah, already th- have, you have that. You, if you're not already a gamer. Right. Like I, I had this because I picked up a game on Steam and realized, like, Oh, my! Co- if it's not streaming something, my com- I don't have very good computers yeah. accessible for gaming right now, right? Yeah. It wasn't a high-end game that I picked up. It was a Fire 
pro wrestling world. Um, it, but still, it was just like, oh, this won't run on the little computer, like, the lap, the like, you know, twelve year old laptop mm-hmm. I have sitting at home that I just get on the internet with, right? This is like the oh no, I need like a little more. Oh, yeah, a little more know. juice. And right. even the one I had when we did an eight, uh, four on four match with exploding barbed wire, it slowed down a little bit. Uh, so th- it, it takes some dedication to do that. It's mm-hmm. not just the thing. Or like the fancy Zen book that's probably lying around or something, right? No. Yeah. yeah so sure. sorry, that, that was in the next article. So it, it looks like a weird thin laptop. So that is probably not for gaming. Let's just say, you know, that's not the thing I'm going to hook my Oculus up to to play whatever crazy well, thing. Wouldn't it be great if you could? Wouldn't it? Yeah, wouldn't it? Right? Yeah. Or a Mac. And I have to say, <laughs> I know I've talked about it before. But how awesome, you know, the Dell or the um, Samsung Dex yeah, yeah. dock. I was sharing it. I, how I, great would it be that if this could be your gaming PC? He's holding his phone up there, ladies and gentlemen. And plug it in. Mm-hmm. You get home from work after a long day. You plug your phone in and you're playing Halo. You know, come on, people. We can get there. I love that idea. I Come do. on, world. I love, Come I love on, the idea world. that you know, everybody has one of these phones. You know, they are expensive. Let's get some horsepower in them, you know? Mm-hmm. I just, I love that idea. I really do. That's awesome. So speaking of which, I want to talk about a disturbing trend in, uh, in uh, phones that has crossed over to laptops here that uh, Cross has, uh, has brought to my attention. And now I can't unsee it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Although you did point out, ladies and gentlemen, it's not just notches. It's reverse notches. It's a reverse notch, guys. It's the Asus ZenBook S13. And I love their their power and beauty. So the whole idea here is, you know, lately in the thinner, lighter laptops, you know, they always struggle. Where do you put the webcam? Where? 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 Uh, a lot of them have started putting them at the bottom in the co- quote unquote chin. That's a horrible of the idea. Display, That's a horrible idea. Which is a horrible idea. It's a, a bad angle up the nose. You know, we've up all the t- nose. talked about it. I see your finger so nails. So Zen said, hey, if it can work for a phone, why can't it work oh, for a laptop? No. And yes, we have a notch. But it, like I say, it's it's on top of it. So basically, instead of extending the entire bevel, like the an extra yes. little bit to accompany it, we just have it go boop, pop up at the top, right? Should be retractable. It's almost like a lip, like to help you open it, like a handle almost. How's this you thing know? closed? Is there a picture of this thing closed? Wait, 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 one thing, it looks beautiful. Okay, it's a big silver something. Everything is flush. The notch sticks out by itself. Right. It just sticks out when the tablet's folded. It's almost like a handle to open the device. I guess, but that's you you putting your thumb right on the camera. Well, yeah, fingerprints. I don't well, know. No, it's, it's, it's solidly... It's, yeah, I don't know about seeing it broken off, producer Missy. Um, but beyond the body, yeah, yes, it yeah. does. I mean, so so if you drop it, that's the thing that's going to break. Huh? Mm. Did not. They we're we're seeing all the accidental whoopsies that we've had in our lives and applying them to this device. <laughs> What's that? Father, no, this won't get broke or hit against the wall. <laughs> the, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but anyways, uh, it, that okay. It's a nice looking laptop, though. Like, it I is know. a very nice looking laptop. It's interesting. Laptop. I don't know. I don't know about this. This at least, okay. At least it's a reverse notch. Yes. Because I, what if you dropped it? It's in the way. Not is anything programmed to work around? Are you just gonna drop everything in the screen? Then why are we notching in the to begin with? Again, Sorry, I think I'm, it's they're just going guess, after that pure. Edge to edge display look. Sword. I'm flustered. I'm flustered now. Trying to think <laughs> about this thing now. Jeez. I. That doesn't mean that if Asus would like us to, we would happily take a look. You know, use them. Give some reviews. Can we talk about Apple's actual presence at CES? 
actual physical presence has Go seen Go right this. ahead. I, this, is, this is kind of a nice little uh, troll a little bit. There's a giant billboard uh, <laughs> that's uh, right across from... Uh, this is a, a billboard overlooking the Las Vegas Convention Center, where I believe that's the main place for everything on CES. Um, and it's just a black and white. has a little outline of the uh, of the phone with the camera and everything, right? And it says uh, simply, what happens on your iPhone stays on your iPhone. And there's a little apple.com slash privacy. Hmm. So while you're looking at all those connected devices these days, you know, I'm poking at those. And I'm sure every cell phone manufacturer is represented that doesn't begin, begin with an A. Wait, no. Well, yes, that, that is a true statement. Yeah. Sure it's like, does Zeus have a phone? But anyways. Yeah. Um. Uh, they, I thought that was a little funny. It's like you said, though. They're there, but not there. Mm-hmm. So, and it's not like, I, and actually, I think, I think technically, did I hear about before or after, like, they're, like, Apple is actually there, like, privately. Oh, yeah, they have I, the secret room. Yeah, they, they're doing the secret room stuff. Um, yeah. So, like, they, they are there. They just don't have a booth, right? All right. And it's a place, I mean, all the, all the reporters are there, so they can preview stuff and, you know, with their embargoes and everything, um, you know, as much as they do. Uh, Here, come sign Apple. our NDA, and we'll take you in the private room. Kind yeah, of thing. yeah, yeah. Have a have a have a look at something over here. Um, would you like to see iOS thirteen? Um, I doubt it. I doubt it at this point. Eh, maybe well, a little bit. Maybe a little bit. I guess they would start about now, uh, they? Yeah, they've been working. Yeah, they've like, got to be working on it. Yeah, they're working on it, or they, maybe they're getting some feedback. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, there's a creepy robot in the corner. It looks like it's a, it's a Hyundai Elevate. I'm sorry, this isn't something. This is literally like <laughs> the video in the corner that started playing on on CNET, and it and we oh no, it's popping up wrong on here. Um, it it's um, geez, I can't I can't bring it up full screen. What are you doing, CNET? Th- this isn't the thing. Now I can't go back to it. Um, I can only show you the corner for some reason, <laughs> but it's oh wait, there we go. It looks like it's a rescue robot. It's got four legs that are wheels. But it still reminds me of the creepy metal dogs from Black Mirror. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Well, that's how it happens. There you go. <laughs> then they then they get armed and, you know, can you know, so, Sorg, stop bullets. I have a question for you. Yes? Would you upload your house key to the cloud? Like my physical? No, because my house key, I feel like I shouldn't show it on, on, on this camera because I feel like somebody <laughs> can then... 3d model it but my house key here i'll show the other side of it is is yoda ah yoda ain't going nowhere the force is strong with my front door guys so now this is another one of those you know hey we're a new company kind of thing from ces so why not put your trust and security into a brand new company it's called key hero oh this so this is so helping me in trust so they will scan your uh, uh, whatever key i guess it could potentially be any kind of key okay but they talk about your house key scan your house key at one of their lovely kiosks and then the day comes oops i've lost my keys mm. you can walk into the kiosk and it'll There's... print you a new one and it looks like any key kiosk okay. yeah right okay. it looks like any any key kiosk there is you've ever seen key hero Key when you want to be a key hero. cutter, but you just want to fake it. Oh, they're currently partnered with Home Depot. Oh, so that so like so if you do this, this is something that you walk into the Home Depot. This isn't like mm-hmm. it's actually kind of distributing out. Okay, and print out your house key. Okay, I guess I don't know. Is there a discussion about how well secure keys actually are? Yeah. I don't, like, oh. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm not a locksmith. No, Are you right. a locksmith? Do you know a locksmith? Well, let's say in a previous life, I used to know how to pick a lock. There you go. And according to every movie I watch, locks are BS. It's it's actually the sta- a standard ho- household lock is actually not that difficult to pick. Nope. It really isn't. I'm just saying that. Yeah. Now I'm not saying you know I'm not talking about like you know the deadbolt or something like that. I'm just saying the regular old you know twist lock for your your front door. You mm-hmm. know they're actually you'd be surprised they're Fairly actually not standard. 
They're fairly standard, fairly easy to pick. Mm-hmm. And that's why so, we're putting them all on the cloud. The cloud, the yes. Upload your key Upload to the to cloud. The, to I don't know if I would do that or not, I have to be honest. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, and Dave said, no, Dave, that's the wrong show. Wrong show. That's a, the, He says we should ask our friends at Slice about the words of getting kicked in. Um, no, that's for the wrestling show. Uh <laughs> It was a promo that wasn't a promo. Anyways, hey, you know what? We got a good friend on the West Coast, and I'd love to hear his opinion about keys and doors and such, too. But uh, our good friend Alexander Cars at alexcars.media is uh, uh, somebody that has been um, in the chat room on the show uh, for so long. He's one of the uh, Sorgatron Media uh, family of podcasts uh, on the wrestling side with Occupy Pro Wrestling and everything. But uh, you can also check him out at alexcars.media where he's got a lot of fun stuff going on over there. If you want to... Uh, if you are putting together the puzzle of design and media from branding to print and digital projects, Alex can do logos, merchandise, websites, and even photo and video projects. Please go check them out at alexcars.media to get started. That's K-A-H-R-S, alexcars.media. He's done some work with us. I was just throwing some, uh, I was just actually throwing them out to some people looking for t-shirt designs and everything recently. He's done some great stuff. And even one of his uh, Kikio, a, a female pro wrestler out there that we've interviewed in the past, was recommending him to a lot of people. So go check it out, alexcars.media. Support him. If you need some media design help, he is your dude. And over there at alexcars.media. Thank you for supporting the show. Well, we got a lot of stuff coming up. Wait, we're getting back into the season. Yes, Krause. we are. Getting Packers. back into it. Pittsburgh Current is coming up this uh, Thursday. If you guys are into wrestling, we got a lot of great interviews. A really good interview with a, a former, I haven't even said this publicly anywhere. We have a, a, a former WWE diva that joined us here in the studio. Um, not where you sat. Uh, <laughs> that was somebody else. Um, but that's going to be a big interview that's going to be coming up this week on the Sorgatron Media Network. And, of course, new episodes. Uh, broadcast just posted a new show. Um, our friends at Thrifty Podcast have been doing great stuff. I, I think over the holiday they were still posting shows I thought I saw. Um, and so much more. And we have – you'll be back next week. We'll be talking kind of uh, CES hangover. I feel like most of the good stuff already happened. Right, like the, the pre announcement. You, you get those gems, though. Really? Sword. Let's see. I, later I feel like and later. I, I, you know, there's two things that happen at the beginning of the year. I sign up for New Japan and completely OD on Japanese wrestling. Also, I get it into say I'm going to follow CES, and he, before we even get to day one of the CES, I'm OD'd on Tech News. So, so let's see what happens this year. Okay. If either of those things happen. And I just don't care about tech news and wrestling in a week from now. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but I am gung ho about it. You're going to keep me honest, and we're going to talk about like the, the anything else that came out from CES, anything else that was announced and discovered. And is it is this is, is today the first day? Today officially? is day one. Today yes. is day one. I think it's all where it always lands with us. Like uh-huh. when, when we're like, "Hey, CES is here. It's day one," and then we got to forget about yeah. it. Yeah. Um, also, we do have already some guests lined up um, by by. Some popular demand. Uh, uh, Bob Cher- Bobby Cherry is coming back next month. He he actually is working over at TAE, and oh. uh, I believe in a digital media capacity of some sort over there too. Uh, we've talked to him a little bit about that in the past. I don't know if it was on the show or in private or whatever uh, over drinks. Who knows? Uh, and also John Carmen will be joining us here in a couple of weeks as well. Uh, so uh, trying to get trying to get all the band back together. Nice. <laughs> so go. What's that? Old Steve sports. Chat room. Steve in the chat room, who is a bartender. I will not screw that up again. Um, Old Sports is recording a new episode tonight. I think you guys do it every Tuesday night, don't you? Uh, second annual Super Bowl live cast will be here at Silvertron Media live in the studio. That will be the morning of the Super Bowl. And I'm very happy because I found out I don't have a wrestling show to shoot that day. And I can watch a Super Bowl and not hate life because i had a show the night before too so uh, <laughs> do you watch the super bowl or do you watch the listen commercials? you know what we do you know and i think we're going to do it again um we had the official big game commercial watch party last year nice yeah so that's what we do because if the steelers aren't in it i'm not watching is there football right now is that happening i don't i don't know i don't care I, yeah the steelers yeah, aren't in we it. show up 
see what commercials happen that probably were already shown before. Um, I feel like I've already seen Walmart Super Bowl commercial that has all the Ghostbusters and Batmobiles and Back to the Futures in it. Oh um, my gosh, have you seen that awesome. thing? Well, that's they're an awesome thing of the week. Bumblebee, I love it. Uh, Sorry, uh, say they were. Uh, yeah, they were. They were on holiday break um, for Bold Sports, but those guys have been been rocking hard. I've been hearing a lot of a lot of new people I know checking out and, and saying good things about the show too. Um, so go check it out. the The only sports ball podcast. The only podcast on the network that probably doesn't refer to it as sports ball. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't. Oh, uh, geez. Uh, but anyways, uh, no, but we had a lot of fun with them. I mean, last year we had, we, they had a, a guy from Penn Brewery here. They had lots of food. They were talking, you know, all the sports ball that you'd want. Uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, but no, look out for details for that. Wow, the event. Sure. Details. Football. football, 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 sports, yeah. football, sports, pod. gotcha. I cover all the bases. Yeah. We might be getting a basketball team in Pittsburgh. Oh yeah, I hear. I heard the speculation the Phoenix Suns might come here. I don't know. Wow, that might have been just the person telling me though. Well, we have the the arena for we it. We do have an arena for it. We have an so, arena. Yeah. Why not? More ball puck in there. Anyways, hoops, hoops, hoop, hoop ball puck. Um. <laughs> Ron Krause, where can people find you online? Crazy Krause on Twitter. Uh, Ron Kraus on Facebook. Uh, I'm here. <laughs> I don't have a whole lot to say. I don't really talk a whole lot on Twitter either. So, but you know, who knows? The the mood might strike me every now and again. Lastly, uh, Steve uh, shows a picture of uh, about to take the take down the tree while watching Awesome Cast, and there's a picture of that rollout TV too. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Hey, if you do watch Awesome Cast in video form, I know our friends. Uh, Doug over at Should I Drink? Should I Drink? That had a new episode this week, the, in the past week or s- two or three. Actually, I listened to it last week, but it was about Christmas beer, so I think I was late. <laughs> so I think that was my fault. <laughs> but I also don't drink beer. I just want to see what Doug's up to. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, no, if you if you watch the show like on the TV, um, you know, on a device anywhere, like what is, where, where are you watching the show? Uh, please hit us up on the Awesome Cast social media or Facebook page. <laughs> and uh, I'm sorry, the chat room's cracking me up. And uh, and let's, we'll share those here on the show and in the social medias. And I'd like to see how you guys are doing that. So thank you so much. Thank you, producer Missy, for keeping us straight here. And, and she doesn't look too angry for after the show. I think we're doing pretty good for the first episode of 2019. But anyways... Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Thank you, chat room. You have been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.